Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it comes from a translation of a message that I received. The translation, it reads like this. I don't know how to start this, but I need to get it off my chest. Maybe I don't know, it is too late, but I can't live with this weight anymore. So, Brother Nashi, I own one of a very popular nightclub here in an area named Hidden. People, they do come all over from Houting and they do come to my club to forget about their lives for a while. They do flock to my club almost each and every weekend as if they are like a moth to a flame. But what they don't know is that there is a darkness that brings them here. Now I am worried. I am really worried because my wife, one day, she went to church and she came back. She was really sad. I saw that when she drove inside, she was just sitting in the driveway. And then I went outside and I said, what is wrong, honey? And she was like, the pastor, while the pastor was praying, said that you have something that you need to tell me. And I could not tell her the truth. And I then told her that the pastor is a liar. Most of these pastors, they just lie anyway because I was scared where she was going with her conversation. So, Brother Nashi, it all started six years ago when I got into this business. I first bought the club. I was full of excitement and I was full of optimism and ambition. I really had big dreams. I wanted to create a space that would be the talk of the town, a place where everyone wanted to be. Like I was targeting the high-end market. I did not want to end up with a tavern where they will be fighting pangas and stuff like that. I wanted your wealthy men to come to my club. I wanted to create a good space, a peaceful one. But the reality of running a club and it then hit me really hard. It even hit me harder, more than I expected. No matter what I did, no matter how much I, inv I invested into advertising, marketing, or events, the crowds were not coming. Week after week, I watched as my savings were getting drained. My debts, they grew and grew, and my dream slipping further and further away. Well, the other clubs in town, they were packed. Every weekend, people would line up for hours just to get in. As for my place, it would be empty most of the times. Expect for a few loyal customers who could not afford the high-end spots, especially when they would be full of people. Like, it was humiliating because I had forced my wife to get into this business venture with me, even using some of her savings that she had and she wanted to start her own business and I convinced her to come and do this with me and I could not even understand it. What was I doing wrong? I was desperate and when you are desperate, usually you do things that you never thought you would end up doing. That was when I met him, a man whom I just met along the way. You know, those people that are from Zim, those ones that just pray anyway. So there was a time when I was just walking around. Then they came a man. This man, he came to me and he was like, I have a prophecy for you. And I stopped because I was desperate. If it was me in another lifetime, I would have told him to stop, to go back with his prophecies somewhere else, for I did not care about them. But in that moment, I was looking for a sign, and the previous night I had prayed to my ancestors for a sign, and this was the sign that were giving to me. And this man told me that he had a prophecy. The reason as to why I was not achieving anything, it was because those that had their own shops, there were some guys that were from Somalia that had their, their shops, close to my bar and the other one as well who was a local south african woman so i was told that these people it was because they were using their own ancestors to make money through their shops so since i did not have anyone like my own ancestors i was not recognizing them this meant that all the bad luck that will be chased away from this shop on my left and the bad luck that will be chased from the shop on my right will end up being in my shop so this man then told me that i needed to do what was right it all depended he said with what you believe in say he said if you believe in christianity then follow the way follow the christian way 
pray always each and every time when you open up your club make sure that you pray but if you believe in the african way speak with your ancestors regularly tell them that this is what you want to happen you do not want to die as a poor man you want the spirit of wealth to follow you so that you can bless your entire generation me and this man we then met and he said that if i was willing if I trusted him, I could give him some money and when he would return to his country, he would bring with him some charms, some charms that they use in their white garment church. He said that when you see a lot of people gathered around a white garment prophet, it means that the prophet is some charm, a charm that calls people to come to him. So I then gave him money. He said, as for now, do not give me a lot of money. Just give me transport money and the one that I am going to use for consultation. So he only charged me. It was 2,000 rands and he said that the rest of the money, once I bring the stuff to you, that is when you will be able to give me the money and also the healer will tell me exactly how much he wants. Well, he came back. When he came back, he had a small black plastic bag. Inside the black plastic bag, there was a red cloth. And inside that red cloth, there was a small skull. It was a monkey skull. It was very old. And it had a lot of things that were inserted into that skull. And I was told that I should never remove all of those things. And I was told that I had to renovate my club. As we will be renovating, I had to try to instruct the con the contractors to create a hole in the building so that I can bury that monkey skull. And he said that it was going to be easy for he was going to find a man who was from Zim who would come and do the renovations, private renovations. So the man first came and then he dug a hole and then I placed that monkey skull very close to the door and this calls people. When someone is walking by, as long as you drink alcohol, you'll end up spending a lot of money in my club. And that is because of that monkey skull. It will be calling out to you. They are men that just come to my club. They'll be coming straight from work. And then the men will say, let me just go and relax. Maybe one will be okay. But the men will end up maybe drinking half of the salary. So life was really good. I don't want to lie. Even right now, life is good my wife is happy so i have two daughters brother nashi my other daughter i'll just change her age because i do not want people to be so suspicious so this daughter of mine i'll say that she is nine and the other one tando i'll say that she is 15 and the problem with her is that she is always screaming one might say that she has mood swings as a typical teenager but no she has these nightmares and sometimes we wake up and we have to rush downstairs because they are staying downstairs and we are upstairs. When she will be screaming, when you go into a spare bedroom, you will see that she will be in a state that will be so scary as if she is demon possessed. So I once sat with her down when her mom was not around and then she told me that she saw a man, a man who was speaking with her in Shona and this man was telling her that he is her husband. She cannot have children. She can never get married for the man is her husband. I was the one who instructed the man to become her husband. So here I am, Brother Nanshi. I am asking for help from people that do come from Zim. Those ones that are very powerful because I want to free my daughter from this thing that is claiming to be her husband. I want her to enjoy life is it not the reason as to why I am working so that they can live a good life? So what is the purpose if at the end of the day they are not going to enjoy life? Let me rest my case. Oh, dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our sister who helped us with this translation. Strange things indeed, they do happen in this world. Yo.